good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to our Cyber Security Awareness Training. So, introduce ko lang po yung sarili namin. So, I'm Ace, IT Specialist. Then, this is Ali, our Graphic Artist and Sir Vincent, our Technical Support. We are conducting Cyber Security Awareness Training with a team of We Coaches Don't Be a Big Team. Sinasagawa natin yung Cyber Security Awareness Training na to. Kasi alam naman natin sa ngayon is si employee yung pinaka biggest link when it comes sa ating company. So sino ba si employee? Si employee kasi yung nagsasagawa ng mga daily production natin, yung mga nakikipag-usap sa mga client natin and go-in. At ito yung rasa mo ba tayo nagsasagawa ng cyber security awareness natin? Si cyber security is, yung pinaka simplest term nyo lang is technique siya na ginagamit ng mga IT companies kung saan Pinoprotektahan ko yung mga computer natin, computer networks, programs, data na sa mga unauthorized access or attacks na ginagawa ng mga hackers. So yun ang simplest term ni cyber security. Next. So si phishing ko, yung pinaka-simplest definition na lang. Kung baga sa mga totoong mga yung isla, kung ano lang po kung sino po yung mahuli niyang isla or kung sino lang yung mabiktima niya, doon po siya magkakaroon ng chance na makuha yung mga information niya. Yun lang yung simple step niya. Pero si phishing din, ginagamit pang scam, pang yun na mapasok ng mga attack sa isang network para mahap nila yung system ng isang kumpanya din makuha yung mga credentials po na magagamit para makapagsagawa sila ng cyber ransomware, yung mga in-attacks ko. So si phishing kasi yung common attack na ginagamit ng mga hacker para makapasok sila sa network pwede or sa personal information natin. So yun, yun lang si phishing. Then may kita nyo rin dito sa picture, sa picture na to, parang nanumungkit lang siya or naghahantay lang siya ng mga victim kung sino ka agad dun sa bahay na nilagay niya. Ano ba yung mga general ways ni attacker para kung bakit na ginagamit yung phishing? So ito, yung mga simplest, yung mga sample lang na ginagamit niya is yung mag-send lang siya ng mga links, attachment, sa kung kanino man, tapos yung si victim naman is mag-open lang siya nung kunyari may matagal pa akong email tapos para nakakahigayat na buksan yung email attachment na yun. So doon nagsisimula na pag binuksan nyo yung attachment na yun or yung email na yun, madadirect nyo sa website ni Hacker, then i-input nyo yung mga credentials nyo na kung saan doon yung magiging passage na para makuha lahat ng mga credentials. Like yung mga credit card information nyo, etc. So dito meron po tayong sample ito kung saan may natagal po si client or si victim na email from BPI. So sa unang tingin, may napapansin po ba kayong nakaiba sa email na ito? Kung kayo, as employee, so hindi po, kung sa tingin niya pa, legit naman po yung email, di ba? Kung aware po tayo na, yun nga, may mga ganito nga pong mga hackers na mga nagtatang para mo kayong information natin. Ito po yung mga napansin po natin na mga mga malicious po or mga hindi Legit, o hindi ka-ayayan ng mga email. Yung mga nakalagay po sa email. So una-una po is yung email address na ginamit from BPI po is, which is yung support special sa outside that day. So kung kayo po is familiar kayo sa BPI, alam nyo po na hindi mga ganyan yung email address ni BPI. And then next po is, ito yung nakaka-trader po kung ba para ma-input or ma- may kaya kayo pindutin yung verify my information kasi meron, may kita nyo meron din itong sentence na nakalagay sa email na Your card will also be temporarily, temporarily suspended until the verification process is complete So kayo kung may, meron kayong mga credit card, credit card holder kayo, di mo kakagawin kayo ng itong information Siyempre yung napapasok sa isip nyo is, yung verify my information ko So pindutin natin yung button na yun Now which is hindi rin po dapat natin pindutin kasi yun nga Pag pindutin po natin na magpupunta po tayo sa sa site po ni Hacker. And then next din po is yung address po na ginamit is yung BPI Express space para online.com pero kung titignan nyo yung Express online is yung online po, yung Express sa online is nakakalapit po siya dun sa online yung nakalikit sa online yung business dun sa BPI Express. So yun po yung mga common type na sa email na ginagamit ni Hacker para makapag-email siya din. May kaya kayo na pindutin yung information yung button na yun para i-verify yung information. So alam naman po natin, meron po tayo na yung MS Department na nag-maintain ng mga controls natin, internal controls, security. Pero, 
Kayo pa din po yung nagiging our first line of defense. Since si employee nga po yung pinawin is link, sila yung nag-process nga po ng daily transaction natin, lagi pag usap sa outside network event line. So how will you do it po? Protecting yourself sa mga ganitong attacks. So una po, user awareness. So ito, sinasabahan natin yung seminar na ito para kung may aware po tayong lahat. Na meron palang mga ganitong real-time cases na nangyayari sa cyber world. So next naman po is yung always use yung strong password po. Para din po sa sa pansarili nating protection. Na lalo na pag may napak na hack po tayo. Siyempre kung mahirap yung password natin, hindi po tayo basta basta agad magpasok ng mga hackers. The next po is yung do not open ang attachment in any email. Lalong lalo na yung mga hindi niyo po expected na ma-receive ng mga emails. Na nagsasabi na, yun na, mag-open nyo lang yung link, mapakatagap kayo ng etc. Yung mga hindi kaya kayo hindi po sa inyong mga links. Next po is yung do not provide sensitive personal information. Like username and password over email. So dito ito yung pinakatapat aware po tayo ng lahat. Huwag na huwag po tayo mag- bibigay ng personal information natin o mga laging credentials natin sa over the internet. Kasi yun po yung pinakapitid nila yun para mapasok kung ano yung mga information natin na tinatago or pinaputek natin. Then, next is yung watch for email senders that use suspicious or misleading domain names. So yung mga misleading domain names po, yun. Tulad po ng example kanina, yung Vipay Express, na ginamit po is yung outside na email address. So yun, dapat maging suspicious po tayo. Then next po is yun, ito pinaka-cover po sa ating lahat po. Siyempre gusto gusto natin ng mga libre. So kaya, be cautious pa rin po tayo sa pagdadamit ng mga free software, free movies, free files, any website po na pinagdadamit na namin. Since kasi free nga ito, kasi hindi naman natin alam kung saan talaga nagsimulot, ano yung root nung, nung files na nadamit natin. Then next is yung visit trusted website. But always be cautious because even trusted websites can be prone to hacking po siya. Next, do not try to open any shared document that you're not expecting to receive. Same lang po ng number 3. Then, last po yung if you can tell if an email is legitimate or not, please verify it from us. So for example, puro kanina sample natin sa BPI, para din po makasigurado tayo na legit or hindi pa tayo aware na Pwede nga talaga yung email na yun. Pwede natin din siya i-verify sa mismo web, sa BPI at website po. Para ma-report din natin kung legit nga po po ba talaga yun na email na nakakap from BPI. Isa din po pala, uh, gusto ko lang din i-brought up is yung difference ng HTTP address and HTTPS. Since ito po is parang common na kasi tayo nga sa employee, hindi naman natin talaga tinitignan yung URL ng bawat website natin na binibisita natin. Kaya gusto ko lang din i-brought up yung difference ng HTTP and HTTPS. So sa HTTP, uh, syempre yung pinagkain nyo lang may S yung isa, yung isa wala. Sa HTTP po kasi, lahat po nung information na i-input nyo doon is prone siya sa hack or pwede makuha ni hack or yung information na i-input nyo sa HTTP. Since si HTTP sites po is hindi po siya secure website na wala po siyang installed mga SSL certificates or yung mga certificate na dapat po meron ng isang legit websites. So yun lang yung pinaiba nila. Sa HTTPS po, na merong S sa dulo is merong secure uh, certificate kung saan yun yung nagiging protection nyo kung ano man yung input nyo sa website na ginagamit nyo. Then if ever man po na mangyari sa atin to na mapasukan tayo ng virus or ma ma-hack tayo, ang unang-una po natin gagawin is i-disconnect yung PC natin sa network. Then, after that, tawag lang po tayo sa MIS department para, para ma-check kung yung infected na computer. Alright. Hindi ka makikita niyo dito, uh, nakabiro lang dito muna yung phone ko. Mag-demo na ako na sample phishing attack data. Siguro naman lahat kayo dito may FB account na. Okay. Dito sa screen, may dito nung ngayon. Ano uh, <coughs> tayo? Magbubukas ako ng email. May nag-send sa akin ng phishing. Ito. Saan natin yan? Nalagay sa akin. Congratulations. You won the 10,000 pesos sa mga giveaway. From SM, to claim your prize, please like our page. Yan, sabi. So, 
Bibi na rin dito yung FB, FB link. So tayo, 10,000. Sino ba naman may ayaw dyan? Ha? Sa tayo ngayon. Pipilit yung mga kagad natin yan. Sa testing natin. At kung papatin mo yan, FB naman siya, okay? Ayan. Sino ba rito pwedeng mga gano'n? Lagi ng FB lang yan.
training that we will be completing as the year goes by. So we want to be compliant with the OSH standards of occupational safety and health. And uh, coincidentally, di ba, uh, sa balita ngayon, we know ang dami-daming earthquakes. So parang feeling ko, very timely yung ating preparations. So the company, JCF personally, gave the go-ahead that we take your time to reorient ourselves about uh, earthquake and fire safety. But before we go to the drill, I want everyone to be able to understand what are the first safety ideas that you can do in case an earthquake, earthquake na tayo, earthquake na tayo fire uh, happens. So, katulad nga lang nangyari sa Batanes, syempre natutulog sila, bigaw lumindol, nag-iba yung bahay, you can't do anything about that. But again, doon natin makikita yung safety ng ating bahay. Because one of the things na kailangan natin matutunan today is, what you need to do before an earthquake. Hindi lang during, even before you have to prepare yourself. So, ano daw ang kailangan mong malaman? So, determine mo daw if yung location ng bahay mo, taga Maritina, fault line ka pala, nasa gitnang gitna ka. So, you have to be extra prepared for that. Or, yun nga, iba na gara Okay. So, ito bang Makati is part of fault line, active fault line? Does anybody know? Active fault line, Makati. Sabi ni Sir George, wala daw. Meron. I mean, pero hindi tayo nasa gitna ng fault line. So, meron, meron fault line na malapit sa atin. But we are not smack in the middle of it. So, relatively, Makati is a safe space to be in in case of an earthquake. So, nag-determine na natin siya. So, use proper structural design and engineering practice. As you can see, the building is newly renovated. It has been lighted. So, para as of today, our building is A-OK. Earthquake proof. Up to, nasa si Sir George? Natago. Up to ilan? Ilang earthquake? Uh, <laughs> More than half lang? Actually, we are required by the uh, Makati building officials to have a study on uh, structural integrity after the earthquake. Dahil hindi nila na-confirm ng during ocular and visual inspection nila kung talaga ang Matibay tayo to withstand 7 to 8 uh, intensity. So, meron pa tayong kailay kong tayo. Para tayo mong mong yabang na talagang tayo. Perfect. Yes, yes. Siyempre, ano, we have to keep up with the ongoing standards. But uh, as of today, the building is structurally, yung integrity niya is okay. So, kumbaga, as of any other location, then like, The Benlife office is a good place to be in case of an earthquake. Okay, so, um, ano ba yung kailangan natin gawin? Uh, kailangan doon natin i-familiarize yung sagilin natin sa ating working days at ang ating residences. Because this is not only for Benlife here, but also for your uh, houses, kumbaga sa bahay nyo. You can use this training para i-re-evaluate kung ano yung mga kailangan i-prepare nyo sa bahay. So, uh, We have scheduled uh, on August 23, uh, fire drill, tentatively pa lang to, fire drill and earthquake evacuation drill. And on that date, we are going to invite members of the Bureau of Fire ng Makati para turuan tayo kung how to use the fire extinguishers. Tapos, uh, later on din, i-discuss natin kung paano natin mabasahin or papakinggan yung mga alarms na marimilin natin during an earthquake or during an emergency. And of course, you have to be aware of your emergency exits. Now, our building is relatively square. So, alam naman natin kung saan tayo dadaan. I hope, alam natin kung saan tayo dadaan in case of an earthquake. But anyway, eventually we will get there. Once we do the drill, we will instruct everyone kung saan sila exit dadaan. Kung doon sa fire exit na maliit or doon dito sa main exit. So that there's no uh, trouble pag nagkaroon tayo ng emergency. So, ano daw yung mga pwede natin gawin? So, for our houses, strap heavy furniture to the wall. So, kita nyo sa drawing, kung may mabigat na yung cabinet, meron kayong mga hanging uh, closets or hanging shelves, try to make them structurally good. Kung baga, involve nyo sila sa wall or sa, sa dinding kung saan man sila nakakabit. Pangalawa, yung mga breakable items daw, saka yung mga harmful chemicals, like using materials, put them in the lower shelf. So, kung may lalagay yung bowling ball mo dun sa iba ko, lagay mo siya sa ilan. Kasi mabigat. Okay? So, logic siya. Yung mag-aad sa taas, yung mabigat sa ilan. So, there's a few members of the bowling team here. Anyway, turn off gas, 
times when not in use because you know when the earthquake happens tapos na shake yung kitchen nyo, bukas yung gas tank, there could be a fire. So hindi lang earthquake, nagkaroon pa ng fire. Uh, check stability of hanging objects. So sa amin sa 7th floor, marami kami painting. So kailangan stable yung pagkakabit niya. Tapos uh, maintain an earthquake survival rate. So uh, as opposed to MIS kanina nagbigay sa inyo ng ano, only learning and uh, food for thought, today we will also be distributing uh, first aid kit and go back to everyone who's attending the training. So this is uh, part of the company goal of making sure that everyone is uh, safe or everyone is able to parang, uh, survive even um, more catastrophic earthquake or fire. So later on you will receive your own first aid kit, first aid of your life. Okay, so uh, today, uh, ang i-represent ko sa inyo ang laman na ating first aid kit. So ang tawag natin dito ay Bell Life Go Bag. So what is inside the Bell Life Go Bag? A Bell Life Go Bag will contain your handy, very light uh, terato made of cloth na, na bag where you can put all your emergency stuff. So inside this bag, you can put, of course, your first aid kit. The first aid kit na ibibigay sa inyo today will contain a flashlight na hindi pinabateryahan. You know, have you seen one of these? You pin up, you know, of course. High tech? Okay, so you charge it. And when you use it, meron ka ng flashlight. So, kung sakali madaga na kayo ng building, pwede kayo mag-i-down. Okay. <laughs> So, exercise na ito. Wala kayo mag-go. Share mo yung flashlight. Cool. Ah, I don't know kung siya isabit sa ID. Pwede. Siguro. This is part of your kit. Ah, syempre, katulad nga din ng scenario natin kanina, pag na-stop ka sa building, kailangan may whistle ka. So, bigyan din kayo ni Ben Life ng yun. Okay. Anyway, kung gusto nga yung isabit sa inyong ID, you can do it. I think, La, like three, four years ago, there was a threat of the big one there. Because everybody had a whistle in their ID. So, uh, ako personally, wala pa akong ID. Hindi pa ako binagawa ni Archie. So, <laughs> Medyo weird na ako. Isasabi ko siya sa daig ko. Baka magtawa na ako ng kalaban ko sa court. Pero anyway, diba? it's optional upon you. Ako din, I can keep it inside my go bag. So, syempre, if in case of an emergency, you go grab your go bag. Uh, Ben Life has provided with cotton, basic band-aids, alcohol, uh, safety pins. Siguro tumatakbo ka, nagpulit yung dadaay, papalit niya kung hindi. Try yun. Scissors. And your IV. So, betadine. So, ito, this will siguro survive you a cut or a bruise. Yan, Yan lang ang may result na ating basic safety kit. But I do not encourage you to just stay with the basic. Okay, so everyone has to uh, sort of make their own go bag. Kumbaga, ito, the Ben Life provided you the basic starter kit, but you have to, you know, uh, complete it with whatever you think is necessary for you. For example, if you have high blood pressure, of course, you have to put medication. Important yan. If you have diabetes, you have to put your insulin there as your go bag. Because it's your emergency bag in case of an emergency. You take it and everything that you need to do, uh, you need to survive. At least, ito ang goal ng DOST pill box is at least 72 hours now. So you have to ration yourself at least 72 hours. So you can survive, yun nga, the big one, kung ano man yun. So ako, I included in my own kit a triangular bandage, uh, ice pack for, you know, pwede yun na Bottled water, because you cannot survive without water. Uh, food, dapat energy bar to eh, pero nakain ko na. So, bubbler na lang yung sample natin. Uh, personal medicine. So, I have Imodium, I have my allergy medicine, I have my anti-digestive thingy thingy. So, you put that. Uh, of course, pita kayo importante yung money. Para makabili kayo sa 7-Eleven pag wala kayong bottled water. <laughs> Uh, ako, I brought extra small towel, uh, battery pack for your phone, diba? extra shirts, uh, uh, ano tawag dito? Fish knife. Yeah. Oh, fish knife. Very handy. It has a knife. It has, you know, tools. I have a pen and a paper. 
eto parang pag maginaw sa gabi, I mean, hindi siya siguro masyari useful kasi nasa tropical country naman tayo, but it's an emergency blanket. So, uh, reflector siya, ini-reflect niya yung body heat niya. So you get, kung maginaw sa gabi, and of course, uh, eto, extra bandage, and, and cooling patch, parang limited sa loob, kung nilalagnat yung pasyente. So these, these items are what I think are important to me. So for you guys, I want you to build your own emergency go bag. So ito yung binigay sa atin ni is starter kit. Uh, I want you to be able to build on your starter kit with whatever you think will be necessary for you. Iba may handgun, di ba yung mga preppers, boosty preppers. So if you think that will be necessary for you, uh, do so please, complete your kits. Tapos, dun sa mga pinamigay sa inyo na leaflets galing sa USD Fieldbox, they have a recommended list of what should be inside your go bag. So that can be a helpful guide for you. Uh, mention nga pala notice, yung kit natin, this will be company property, so you will be accountable for this. This will hold you accountable, so if you leave the company, you have to return it. Sabihin mo, paano kung nagamit mo na yung alcohol sa kayong buna kasi nasugatan ako? Palitan na lang po natin. You have to always keep your go bag intact. Para hindi siya pag emergency, you're not missing items, di ba? So, you had a cut, pinalkohol mo, ginamot mo, binasaday mo. Please, please replenish your go bag. So that yung iba naman nagagamit sa kanya sa future, when you come to it, like, yung bawa yung bali. Nagpapaltos ako kasi bago yung sapatos ko eh. Tumitin ko muna. Please do so. Yeah, you're free to do so. But, at the end of the day, please replenish your go bag. So that it's always complete when you need it. So, nakapag-prepare na tayo. We have our book bag. We have, binote uh, na natin yung ating mga heavy equipment. Ngayon, kapag-red quick, ano na yung gagawin natin? This is the most important part. So, if you are in a structurally sound building, stay there. Sabi niya, kung matiba yung building mo, huwag kang magpanik. Try to stay there. But I know there are several people who are staying in a non-structurally safe environment, like nasa construction site ka, or yung bahay mo, medyo lumana. If there's an earthquake, go outside immediately. Pero if you're in a safe building like this one, relatively, keep calm, stay in the building. So, uh, ano ang pinaka magandang gawin habang lumilindol? Stay daw sa ilalim ng mesa or in a door jam sa pagitan ng pito. Ang problema natin, wala na tayong door jam, lahat glass. Kasi yung unang bilang is, stay outside or stay away from glass. Kasi glass yung unang nababasag. At yung pinaka-common na cause ng injury is you get cut by glass, falling glass, or you get hit on the head by a head object. So ang advice niya is stay away from hanging items. Problema, marami tayong hanging items. So what do we do? We go outside, uh, under our, our uh, tables. Chinect tayo yung tables, they're pretty sturdy. Pretty sturdy. So please, on a earthquake, do the... Ano yun? Top, cover, and hold. Okay. Tapos, what to do during the earthquake if you are outside? Umalis daw tayo sa kuryente. Ngayon, I was checking along Soto and along Legaspi. There's a lot of electrical wires. So, I don't know. But at least try to stay away from them if you can. Stay away from buildings with gas panes. Again, check out Legaspi and Soto. I don't know if you can find a building without gas panes. But if you can, please stay away from them. Yeah. Kung nasa beach ka daw, at malakas yung earthquake, please go to higher ground because there is a fear of tsunami. So, very important. If you are on the road, ayan, malapit daw sa mountain or near a steep slope. So, nagbubiyahin ka patagay sa Lumayo ka daw sa mountains, up by the side, and observe. Huwag kang magpaproceed. Again, if you are on the road, Tapos, dadaan ka na, pagpunta ka ng Jones Bridge, sabi mo, eh, okay naman siguro, makadaan na nga, tapos biglang bubungo yung building. As long as you're not yet sure that the built bridges are structurally safe, please do not pass them. Go to the side of the road, stay there, and wait for news, wait for authorities to instruct you, kung safe na nga ba daanan yung building. Because, you can see it, baka buo, yung pala sa ilalim, hollow na siya, di ba? We're never sure. So, go to the side, and don't, don't drive. Okay, so, what to do after an earthquake? Ibig sabihin, we have to get out. So, so ito, check surroundings, check out chemical spills, check out water and electrical lines. Ito, this is for your house. 
But for the building here, it's gonna be George's job and the facilities job and you know, the programming there. Okay, so uh, there are instances when after a big earthquake, walang communication. So wala kang cell phone ser service. So uh, sinasabi niya that if you have to leave the building or if you have to leave, to leave your house, you have you leave a sign on the door saying, Pupunta ko lang kay Nanay Med doon sa kabilang Ibayo. So, meet me there para alam ng mga friends and relatives na where you can meet each other. Because there's gonna be panic if you can find it. And when you evacuate again, bring your bow bag. Ngayon, again, your bow bag natin is for the office. Don't bring it to your LRT. Babiyahin mo ba din. Tapos pabalik ulit, mapapagod kayo. So, advice is have a bow bag here, have a bow bag at home, have a bow bag in your car, if possible. Uh, don't enter person damaged buildings. Kasi nga, there may be aftershocks. You know, sa Batanes, they're sleeping outside because you can't get scared of aftershocks. Na possible mag iba pa structures nila. So, if you can sleep outside, build the tent. Uh, tapos, if you have uh, radio operated by batteries, I don't know if anybody still has this. Do so, please. Unless you need emergency help, huwag kayo masyadong magtaratawag. Bakit? Kasi authorities or other respondents might need the lines to be able to call each other. So parang, kung feeling mo, kompleto naman yung pamilya nyo, tapos safe naman kayo, relatively, you don't need help. Huwag na kayong, uy, teka tatawag na kasi kumari yung kapatid mong pinsan ko na nag-asawa niya, no? Kasi baka okay lang sila. Please don't make the lines busy. Stay, parang quiet muna, observe muna, huwag muna magtaratawag. Huwag din kayo sa sakay sa kotse para mamasya at mag-uusyo. Ano kaya nangyari doon sa tuloy namin makapunta ha? Because the roads might be needed by authorities, by ambulances, by fire trucks to be able to be mobile. Uh, okay, nandito na tayo sa drill phase. So alarm phase, uh, on August 23, we will sound the alarm at around 10 a.m. So the alarm will be one continuous reading. So that will indicate an earthquake on the day. So what do we do while the alarm phase is going? We go duck over it. Okay. Has anybody of you heard of the triangle of life? Triangle of life. Okay. A few years back, there was this guy who advocated for uh, instead of going under the desk now, it's safer to be on the side of the desk because nakikita niya daw during the event, mas safe daw kasi when the uh, a heavy object falls, nagkakaroon ng triangle on the side of a sturdy building. Sa ilalim daw kasi nakakrush lang siya. Apparently, it was a hoax. So parang it's a guy who was trying to make himself famous by saying things na ganon. But apparently, it's not scientifically proven. So here niya. Ngayon, the National Red Cross has ruled out the possibility. So they're still saying that do not rely on the triangle of life. Still go duck cover hole under your desk. That's still the safest way to, in case of an earthquake. So, Stay under the table until dito sa building natin until the marshal calls out ready to evacuate. Okay, so when the marshal says, okay, we're evacuating, go outside, go up, and slowly exit the building. Okay, so yan nga. So let's stop na yung alarm. Proceed. Throw predetermined routes. So kasi sinabi sa inyo na itong mga nasa section na to, sa hadal na to dadaan, sa section na yun, sa kabilang exit dadaan. So follow kung ano yung naka-predetermined sa inyo. Assembly phase. Uh, assembly area groups form from each floor must stay together. Sama-sama. Again, the floor marshals whom I will introduce to you later will be the ones responsible to list down. So, pag lumindol, tapos sinabi, kabana tayo. Huwag kayong sumakay ng jeep at umuwi sa bahay. Kasi siya-check niyo yung bahay. <laughs> okay, please stay muna together in the evacuation area. And let the floor marshals check whether or not you are safe or not. Because, you know, if you are not there, they will have to find you and they will have to go inside back again the building to check if you're there. For safety purposes, kawawa naman yung mga nagahanap sa inyo kung sakali. So please make sure that you have told your floor marshal where you are and if you're going home, whatever. So, okay na po. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for attending, sir.